So France take it 30 points to 24. Is this the decider for the Six Nations? Well, if it is, the intensity was insane. Now, watching that game from the outside, you may say, well, there weren't many big phases of attack. It didn't look overly pretty at times. But I would argue that's because you've got two hugely quality sides, particularly in defence, cancelling each other out. Neither side could get into their flow. I think at the end of the game, both sides would be a little bit frustrated. They couldn't get into that great flow. But I think that's the sort of game it was going to be because of the quality of these sides. So the beginning of the game actually starts with an absolute bang, loads of quality, and then it goes a bit messy throughout. So anyway, the beginning. Crazy um, from France. They score through Dupont. A bad clearance from Gibson Park actually triggers it. France go quickly straight away, wanting to play fast. Intermac makes the break. Offloads inside. Dupont is there, as he always is. Perfect start, 7-0, literally within a minute. Unbelievable stuff. Both sides trying to play crazy fast, uh, but France actually managed to hack through after a decent island attack, go 60 metres up the pitch, get the penalty. The crowd goes cra crazy, 10-0, just after five minutes, so the worst start Ireland could have. Can they get back in it? Well, Hansen says it absolutely, and I'll do it straight from kickoff. Um, Candy from a baby off of Jaminet, a bit embarrassing there. Amazing hands from Hansen, just takes the ball straight out of his bread basket and goes over for a try. Top conversion from Carberry out wide. 10 7, take a breath. Uh, what a start to the game. France were 10 ahead, now they're only 3 ahead. And then it starts going a bit tit for tat. Ireland are trying to get into their passing game as they did last week but the pressure from france is stopping them they're having to force the pass a bit quicker some forward passes some drops um, not making it stick and then more great ruck contest from france their ruck contest in the whole game was insane they get a penalty first up there 13-7 definitely that french defense they're really blitzing trying to put pressure on and one of Ireland's tactics early on is to put the ball in the air on the French back three. And they are getting a bit of change off Jaminet there for sure, but not getting any points off it. Now, France's line speed does look a little bit higher than Ireland's. Ireland's defence was really good, but France just seemed to have the edge, blunting the Irish attack. Two quality sides, not the prettiest. But anyway, they're kind of cancelling each other out, making it look messy. On 30 minutes... Ireland, again, get into a decent attack, but French either disrupt with a big tackle or stop the flow somehow. The story of the half for Ireland, very frustrating. Then on 31 minutes, France making big carries, making good ground, but they can't get into any good patterns either because of Ireland. Same in the line-out. The line-out looks an absolute mess, but that's mainly because there's so much pressure from both sides. There's overthrows, there's uh, messy takes. Um, that goes on all game, really. Then an absolute moment of quality from Dupont again. A laser pass off his left hand to Pinot. He's away. They get a penalty, 16-7. Then on 38 minutes, just to rub it in, they get another penalty. It's off the back of a big French scrum. They get onto good front foot ball. Ireland seem on the ropes and conceding only three points at that point probably was a good uh, result. But anyway, half time, 19 7. Ireland can't get into their game enough. France are edging it a bit more quality. They'll be very happy with that score. Into the second half, and straight away I'm making more notes about Dupont. He affects the game so much, such huge impact. The one I was noticing here was his tackling. He's flat in the line making huge destructive tackles, as well as his kicking, his passing and his running. Just so much of the best nine in the world. Anyway, a really painful offside from Conway, a bit needless, gives France more points. So at 22-7, things are looking quite bad. Big kick from Jaminet there again. He's a really good kicker. But Ireland then get a bit of a, a green patch, shall we say. Five, six minutes where they really start to play a bit of rugby. Andrew Porter with an amazing tackle straight into a jackal. Goodness me, he's one of their best players, along with Furlong. Um, really good stuff. Gets a penalty. They go to the corner, five-metre line out. And then the French mall defence splinters. Van der Fleer manages to split off through the middle. Scores a try. France will be disappointed with that. But anyway, vital try for Ireland, 22-14. And all of a sudden, the French defence suddenly seems full of holes where it hasn't before. 
Kida makes a big break. Momentum seems to be shifting, getting phases going. Ireland goes to the corner twice and don't take the points. And it's all Ireland now. Gibson Park spots a mismatch. Nice side step on uh, Willemser and goes through under the post 22-21. So they're right back in it after it looking like it was all France. They were going ahead with it. It's Ireland straight back in there. And the game opens up now. It's getting a bit better. Amazing footwork from France. They seem to be a bit liberated. Flinging the offloads, occasionally looking a bit carefree, but they're sticking. Ireland scrambling well. And Ireland actually diffuse a good attack like that, but then all they have to do is um, clear their lines. But again, that French ruck pressure too much. Squirts the ball out. Uh, Cyril Bailly picks up the ball. Good stretch to score. 27-21 just when Ireland were back in it. That was a bit of a killer blow. And indeed, the French ruck contest is ridiculous. That Sean Edwards defence, just crazy stuff. Anyway, on 63 minutes, just when Ireland are trying to launch an attack, again, that tackling stops it dead. Brilliant defence again. And Ireland often have to commit more players to the ruck than they want, which could slow it down. And something like that seems to be mucking up their attacks every time. Furlong and Porter still playing really well, carrying like absolute trains. Um, breaks down a little bit, but Ty Byrne manages to conjure a 50-22 from pretty much nothing. Uh, but of course, the line-out's a mess, as it was all game for both sides. So that's a chance gone begging there. Story of the match, definitely get a few good carries going, then something goes wrong. Anyway... Ireland get back into it on 17 minutes. Much better multi-phase play. Plenty of half breaks from the likes of Ringrose as well. I think he's still playing really well. Get a penalty, 27-24. So still in it. Very tit for tat. Who's going to blink? Then out of a bit of a messy period of play, it's a delicate chip from Fiku that sets France off in the 22 for Ireland. Um, nice continuity. Looks like Jaminet has gone over. But it's actually an unbelievable tackle from Sheehan that rolls him over, stops the grounding. But earlier on in the play, there is a silly playing on the floor from Doris that gets a penalty for France. 30-24. Looks like it's all over. Ireland have got two minutes and actually Henderson steals the ball straight from kickoff. But then a panic forward pass from Carty. That was a bit wild. Uh, mucks it up. So France do win. 30-24. I think they're good value for it. That sheer intensity in defence, their ruck defence, and just that extra individual quality from the likes of Dupont just make the difference. Ireland, you could see the quality there, but France didn't let them get into their stride, apart from that kind of five, six-minute period when van der Fleer scores and then Gibson Park scores. Apart from that, France had disrupted it very nicely. They're two from two. They're certainly even bigger favourites to win the tournament now, although both sides feel as a team they can get better, particularly in attack, I think, to get more phases going. Anyway, guys, what a great Saturday of rugby from both those games. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you next time.